Hello, welcome to our Nixitube factory. Uh, this is another video from the series on making the Omnixi clock, which is our new six tube Nixi clock model. This video is a summary of what happened this week. And as I mentioned in the previous videos, we made a plan at the beginning and we are testing our organization uh, capability of sticking to the plan. It's important for us to be able to set up a plan, calculate everything and produce the desired quantity of clocks on time and on budget so that everything works as expected. Okay, never mind. This is first week of the actual Nixie tube production. The production of the Nixie tube takes three weeks and uh, this week we started the first three week sequence of producing a batch of 60 tubes. So this week was mostly about preparations like cleaning the material and also assembly of the digits. So here we have the internal systems prepared for further assembly. And here we have colon tubes because every week we have to produce 60 tubes and 20 colon tubes. These are waiting for me to seal them on the glass late next week. And this week we got back the leak detector from service and we will take back the old unit and replace it with a new one which is more productive so the leak checking of the stems will be will be faster For the new Omnixi clock we are going to use a ceramic coating called Ceracote. There are a couple of reasons why I want to switch from anodized aluminum. And the main one is because I want to play with more colors. Uh, the aluminum is limited to just silver and black. We found good suppliers for the silver and black anodized aluminum. Uh, all the other colors are either kitschy or they struggle with consistency over time. So if you have the tube bases anodized with let's say gray color 
uh, and you want another batch of gray color in a year or so, uh, there is a risk that the color will not match the previous batch. So we decided that we want to try Syrah code and now we are finding ways to get good Syrah code coating on our parts. So, yesterday we got the bases back from Seracota and today I want to sort the good ones from the bad ones. So, these are the parts that we need to get anodized. For each clock we need one stand, six of these large tube rings and two rings for the two bases for the colon tubes. And obviously the best way to get them seracoated is to find reliable supplier, reliable applicator. I wrote to five shops offering Syrah coating. I got only one reply and this reply uh, I got a quote from them for over 200 euros per one clock set. So that's very expensive, that's something that absolutely doesn't make sense. So we decided that we will go another way, we will find a local supplier, like a local paint shop and we will prepare the Syrah coat process for them and they will do just the coating because I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to set up a paint shop I, maybe we can do the cleaning, we can do the sandblasting but let the other, but let the paint shop to do the application and this is the result of the first batch the local paint shop that we found works mostly for automotive doing large batches of parts mostly protective coating and other things so I thought maybe automotive it could it could work so we'll see anyway there are many problems with this batch already but um, let's start with the good things so let's start with the case of the clock uh, the good thing is that they know how to make a uniform coating so it's perfectly uniform so this particular coating has small metallic particles in it and uh, when you spray it you need to be constantly shaking with a spray gun otherwise it will settle and uh, you will get uneven coating. Some places will be darker, some will be lighter as there is more particles in it. So this is what they did correctly. The coating is beautiful, uniform. So there are a couple of defects, so for instance here there is a coating missing, looks like it was wiped out. We designed these fixtures uh, that will allow the applicator just hold it like this, spray it and then hang it so that he can let it dry out and then uh, put it into oven without touching the, you know, accidentally touching the part and then he can take it down and put it into the box. The two bases turn out to be much more problematic and unfortunately almost the whole batch of 271 tubes is needs to be reworked. Uh, these are the only ones, 44 tubes, that were saved and these are perfect. These have no, no flaws, these are beautifully coated but all the rest will need to be sandblasted again and repainted. That's different to anodizing because if you work locally like this you can always sandblast it and get the coating redone. Uh, if you buy the anodized parts uh, you would need to ship the parts back and that's not very convenient. 
So, <clears throat> some examples of the problems. The paint job they didn't coat this bottom edge. You can see it here, that's just something that needs to be specified, specified better. Also here are some lighter places. And also here you can see a place that was not coated correctly. Fortunately, half of the column bases went out well, so we will be able to use these and only 20 of them or so will be recoated. So we have 44 bases for the next week. We need 60 at least. So uh, this is too short time to play with suppliers. So we will have to code few of them ourselves. But that's fine, we counted with this and uh, let's hope that the next batch will be better, we will communicate it properly with the suppliers. So everything is going according to the plan, it's just the first week so it would be bad if it wouldn't. Uh, but still there are a couple of things that uh, needs to be solved like the bases and uh, 